joining me on this Total MD version 18 feature video. Today we're going to be going over some of the highlights of the new features that will be available in Total MD version 18. The first feature I want to talk about is here in the appointment scheduler. And if you open up an appointment, you will see this additional information that's available down at the bottom with the picture, birth dates, insurances, balances, and a few other pieces of information. This information should just make it easier for those people that are scheduling appointments. The next couple of features I want to show you are available here inside the patient record. So we'll go ahead and open up William Grant here and we'll see a couple of new boxes here. First of all is the verify address button here which will connect to the United States Postal Service and allow you to compare what you have against their database. In this particular instance, because this is our work address here, there's no suite number. So when I click on it, it's going to come up with a message after it runs out and checks that says, hey, we're missing some information. An apartment number, suite number, something else is missing in there in order for it to be a complete address. We'll go ahead and hit OK, and then it'll compare, though, what, what is there. And it says, you know, it's the same. The Postal Service does always reply back with all caps and no punctuation. So if you want to use that way, that's perfectly fine. You can hit yes, but if you want to just kind of compare it and see that it looks right and still keep it the way I have it, I'm going to go ahead and hit no, but at least I know it's right. And then I could come back in here and put in the suite number if I had that. The other thing I want to show you here real quickly is just this option here, which is texting. So if you do have our texting services, that allows you to send birthday texts and appointment reminder texts and whatnot. You also have the option to just quickly send somebody a text by clicking on the little icon, typing in your message, and hitting send. Simple as that. Now you might be aware of a feature that we've had for a really long time, which is the ability to have certain pieces of information default into the patient record. So when I click new patient, if I'm an OBGYN clinic as an example, I can have gender default to female or any other fields I might want to be already populated when I click new patient. We now have that feature that's available inside the provider list or the insurance list. So if I wanted to set up a new insurance company and I wanted certain fields to be in here already, for example, let's say that I always want the group NPI to show here as well as here and I want the practice information to always be in when I'm creating new patients instead of individuals. Instead of having to change this every time, I can fill out that information, click Save as Default. It tells me that this will be information that will be in here automatically from now on when I click New. And then I come up with this saying, hey, this is what how it's going to be. I hit OK. So now if I cancel my changes, Go back out, do new insurance plan. That information, the group NPIs and practice information is what's defaulted in here from now on. The same sort of thing is available when setting up a new provider. The next thing I want to show you is in the ledger. And although it's a simple thing, it is one of the biggest requested features that we've had. So we put it in here in this new version 18. And what it is just allows you to have your line items here, your charges, show up in date order with the associated payments and adjustments underneath it. So all the previous versions, if I were to come in here and put in a date, let's say something between 614 and 821, we'll go ahead and say I, I missed a date of service in July. So we'll say 77. When that gets saved, you see that it moved it directly in between these two. One of the great things is when you convert from any of your previous versions to version 18, is it will find any of them that are out of order and put them in the correct order automatically for you. All right, the next thing I want to show you is in the claims area. And there's two things I really would like to show you here. First thing is if you happen to be a practice that uses UBO4 or institutional claims, we now have those in an editable format. We've always had the 1500 form in here, whereas now we have the UBO4 form as well. So if I wanted to come in here and type stuff in, make changes directly on here, I can. I can view it here as well. But regardless of whether or not you do those or just 1500s, we have the option here to view a claim or a, the next claim or previous claim without having to close and then double click on the claim. So you can just kind of work your way through and see these different options. So it, this is a 1500, 1500, now the 
UB04 and it'll just kind of keep going like that and you can see it and it is based totally on your filters so for example if I wanted to just work through all of my failed validation claims if I had them I could click on that and then I could just work my way through those so open up the first one come in here do what I need to do here I could just go to the next claim fix what was missing or wrong there then the next claim and then once I'd updated all of my claims here, I could close out and they would all be ready to bill. Some people like to go through all their ready to bill claims before they send them out. So you could do the same thing, Have start with the first one, open it up, just kind of look at it, next, and just keep going through all of them that way as well. Now in version 16, one of the features that became available is the ability to issue patient refunds. In this version, we've added the ability to do insurance refunds. So if we come into Allie Johnson's ledger, or it could be done from the payments window as well, either way. But here we see that she has a $30 credit on the account. If we decided, hey, we're going to go ahead and issue an actual check back to the insurance. So this is different than a take back. I can come in here, do new insurance payment. Then you're going to come in here and put how much you're going to pay back to the insurance. By default, when you do a payment, it's going to have no positive or negative signs. It's going to be blank, which means positive. When you click refund, though, it's going to change it to a negative. And so now we're going to distribute it just like we would a regular insurance check. So here's our $30 credit balance. When we put it in here, we're going to use a refund code. Okay, so I've chosen that. It tells us up here, it reminds us to refund. We put it in here, then we maybe tab over, click over so that it saves it. Puts it back here to $0. We'll go ahead and post and close. The unposted amount was zero. Everything's been distributed. And now when we go back into the ledger, we can see our insurance refund. The next thing I wanna show you is in activities and it is the write-off wizard. When you come in here, it's a wizard that will allow you to write off groups of people. So, for example, you could say, I want to write off a family member. So, if Dalton was a family member to the doctor and we're just going to write everything off, he doesn't owe anything, we could wait till after the insurance has paid, which means we can check the patient only responsible box. So, only show me things that the insurance has done paying for. I'm going to search for all of his charges. Here they all are. I could put in a write off code. Maybe this is a family discount and I click process write-off and it went through its process and so now if we were to go over to Dalton's account now if we were to come into Dalton's ledger we can see all of those have been written off at least all of the ones that were patient responsible so another instance where you would use that would be for example let's say you're going to send out a group of statements and you say you know it's not worth it for us to send statements to people that have very small balances. It's just not worth the effort or the paper or, or any of that to, to do it. At some point, you know, there's a cost where you say, since every statement has a cost, by the time you print it out, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it or whatever, and you say, okay, well, if they have a balance of $5 or less, let's see all of those people. What this is showing us is, all the transactions that have a balance of five dollars or less and maybe we say well you know what if they have a balance of more than that so for example Paige Davis her total balance is forty eight dollars so sure we might not normally want to bother sending a statement for a dollar seventy five but if we're already going to be sending her a statement for a bunch of other things that total up to forty eight dollars and seventy five cents then we might as well go ahead and include the dollar seventy-five. But if we said, hey, we're gonna go ahead and put in here, we'll say we want a total balance of five dollars. We added that in and it took off Paige Davis, since her total balance was a lot more than that. And now we just have these two people, Allie and Nelson, that have small balances that total a small amount. We say, that's not worth it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and do a courtesy discount and I'm going to process that write off. And now it's written those balances off. And it does over here kind of tell you what the filters are doing in, in lay terms to make it very easy to understand which group of patients you're looking at. The last thing I'm gonna show you today is if you go up to activities and go down to insurance aging drill down, this is essentially a aging report that's interactive. So 
Whereas before, if you wanted to look at aging, you'd go to your reports, find your primary insurance aging report, secondary insurance aging report, whatever, and look at the information there. This is a real-time aging report. So I'm going to look at primary stuff. This is all the insurances that have stuff aged in any of these areas. If I start unchecking certain boxes, some of these will go away. Since Medicaid only has something in the 90 column, once I uncheck that, Medicaid is going to drop off that list here. So now I just have this list here. And if I would like to go into some detail here, I can click on Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I can come in here, look at the all the different claims and transactions. If I want to click here on this particular line and claim, I can see I have a note here specific to this. I have hyperlinks here that I can go back and access that information. But it lets me see every single transaction uh, that's aged in the criteria that I've selected here. So th that's what I wanted to show you today on our Total MD version 18 video. These are just a sampling of some of the features that are available. If you have any additional questions or would like to see anything in more detail or get a price quote, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 1-800-613-7597. Thank you very much and enjoy Total MD 18.